the excitement for Flight 4 is really ramping up, as SpaceX gears up for what could be a historic milestone, Flight 4. With each passing day, the anticipation builds, and SpaceX engineers are laser-focused on ensuring the success of this pivotal mission. Following upgrades to the Flame Trench system and Booster QD, SpaceX is forging ahead with preparations for the mission. However, one crucial aspect that SpaceX has yet to accomplish successfully is the landing phase of the mission. Nevertheless, it is highly anticipated that this year, perhaps even in the coming months, SpaceX will embark on the inaugural attempts of a long-awaited method, catching the booster using the Mechazilla arm. This endeavor is poised to be a monumental challenge considering it represents uncharted territory in aerospace engineering. So how will the landing process with the Mechazilla arm unfold, and what factors demand careful consideration in this pivotal task? Let's go ahead and discuss the latest developments. First up, let's examine the hardware for this flight. S-29 has been stationed in the high bay for nearly a month since its roll on March 29th. During this period, meticulous attention has been devoted to the heat shield, underscoring the importance of ensuring every detail is meticulously addressed. In a recently updated image, the nose cone of S-29 stands proudly adorned with a fresh set of heat shield tiles, a testament to the meticulous attention to detail invested in its preparation. While this work likely concluded several days ago, the unveiling of a clear image now serves to confirm its completion. It's incredible to think that if all goes as planned, we might witness another starship clearing the launch tower in less than a month. Assuming, of course, that our vehicles will be ready in time. The next duo of prototypes destined for the skies are Booster 11 and Ship 29. Elon Musk mentioned that the super-heavy booster used for this mission would attempt a landing on a virtual tower gearing up for a Mechazilla catch during Flight 5. The landing on the virtual tower with the booster works, then we will actually try with Flight 5 to come back and land on the tower. So the booster will think it is landing on tower chopsticks where there are none in the middle of the ocean. Meanwhile, the upper stage, Ship 29 is expected to survive re-entry and make a hard landing, likely in the Indian Ocean. Also, not that smart, but it's needed as a next step. To achieve this, Ship 29 has been undergoing extensive modifications, replacing hundreds of heat shield tiles. Turning our attention to the broader heat shield system, it's evident that SpaceX is leaving no stone unturned in ensuring its integrity. Notably areas such as the forward flap and its surrounding components reveal numerous empty positions, indicating ongoing tile replacement efforts. Perhaps prompted by lessons learned from past missions, SpaceX appears to be proactively addressing any potential issues to bolster system reliability. This renewed focus on heat shield integrity is especially crucial as Elon Musk sets his sights on the successful splashdown of the ship during Flight 4. All three flight tests that we've seen so far have had the ship shed a noticeable number of tiles during flight, though the number has been going down with each subsequent launch. We're not sure why these tiles in particular were removed but it looks like SpaceX are definitely doing something with the tiles before Flight 4, most likely toughening up the attachment points. While the progress of S-29 is transparent with its fully installed nose cone visible, the status of B-11 remains shrouded behind the closed doors of Mega Bay 1. Despite returning to the production site earlier this month, updates on B-11's upgrades have remained elusive, speculations abound, suggesting that B-11 may be undergoing significant transformations potentially being installed in the hot staging area due to its absence during the last testing phase. As we eagerly await SpaceX to unveil the mysteries behind Mega Bay's door, anticipation mounts. Following the anticipated upgrades and installations, I foresee the imminent rolling of both stages to the launch site for a full stack in which rests rehearsal, inching closer to the target at May launch. With the deadline fast approaching, next week promises to be filled with riveting developments as preparations intensify. In anticipation of the crucial tests ahead, upgrades at the launch site are in full swing. SpaceX has recently completed the booster QD upgrade at the OLM, enhancing the launch system's efficiency. The new actuators were tested later on in the week, and yep, the arms seem able to move, hopefully the performance was up to scratch. The booster quick disconnect also saw some work, some hosing was removed overnight, which is curious as the internal hosing of the booster quick disconnect was removed from replaced already following Flight 3, so not quite sure why it's being changed again. Moreover, the actuator system on the launch tower has undergone replacement and subsequent testing with the chopstick. 
the skyline at the launch site is about to undergo some pretty drastic changes. For starters, Earthwork is ramping up to pave the way for the construction of a second launch and catch tower for Starship, and the old vertical tank farm saw the beginning of the end for ground spore equipment tank 6, its outer shell was cut up and then partially removed, with continued scrappage ongoing. So yeah, it's gonna be a few more weeks at least before SpaceX will be ready for Starship's fourth flight test, but it's still fun watching SpaceX continue transforming this little spit of land into the gateway to Mars, seeing two launch towers is gonna be insane. Pivotal for tasks like lifting boosters and ships. This upgrade holds particular significance for Flight 5, where it will facilitate booster catching by adjusting its position on the chopstick for seamless transfer to the OLM. However, the crown jewel of recent upgrades at the launch site undoubtedly lies in the tank farm. Earlier this year, the removal of two water tanks, including Shell 2 and Shell 8, alongside the GSE-8 inner tank, marked the initial phases of upgrades. In recent days, the removal works have extended to encompass Shell 6 and the remaining water tank GSE-7, underscoring SpaceX's unwavering commitment to enhancing infrastructure in preparation for upcoming missions. On April 18, the tank farm saw the arrival of cranes and lifting jigs, signaling the commencement of crucial upgrades. The following day, these systems were swiftly affixed to the shell, marking the beginning of cutting operations. By that day's end, the tank shell had been successfully hoisted and meticulously sliced into smaller, more manageable pieces. April 22nd witnessed the crane's resumption of activity as it secured the inner tank. By the morning of April 23rd, the inner tank followed suit being lifted out of position before undergoing the same precise cutting process as its outer counterpart. Following the removal of the water tank, SpaceX's focus will shift towards dismantling the adjacent liquid nitrogen tank, encompassing Shell 7 and the GSE-2 inner tank. Moreover, the delivery of the Paralyte Cryo Tank Vacuum Tank by truck on April 22 indicates that the removal of the nitrogen tank is imminent. With these upgrades, SpaceX is steadfast in its mission to enhance its fuel system, opting to replace vertical tanks with horizontal counterparts. After the completion of these two tanks, the vertical tank system will have four units remaining, comprising three liquid oxygen tanks and one liquid nitrogen tank. It's conceivable that this year may witness the removal of these tanks ushering in a new era for the tank farm and subsequent flights. Now, let's dive into the latest update. In the last presentation at Starbase, Elon Musk unveiled several groundbreaking developments and ambitious plans for the future. If the landing on the virtual tower with the booster works, then we will actually try with Flight 5 to come back and land on the tower. The anticipation is palpable as SpaceX gears up for the imminent launch of Flight 4 scheduled for May. If the mission proceeds smoothly and SpaceX maintains their impressive pace, Flight 5 could potentially follow shortly after, possibly in July or August. There's even speculation that the interval between flights could be shortened if Flight 4 achieves its objectives efficiently. So get ready for an exciting series of events as SpaceX continues to push the boundaries of SpaceX exploration. But first, let's turn our attention to how they plan to land the booster. In terms of the timeline, not many anticipate major changes to the process for the booster aside from the landing location. Moving ahead to the landing procedures, after separating from the ship, the booster will kick off from the boost back engine burn around T plus 2 minutes 55 seconds from the ship. To adjust its posture and landing direction, about a minute later, the boost back engine will shut down to transition into the booster transonic phase. At approximately T plus 6 minutes 46 seconds, the booster will initiate the booster landing burn to decelerate and fine-tune its landing position. Once it reaches its designated landing spot, the engine will shut down, marking the successful completion of the mission. That's correct. The basic booster landing procedure will likely remain the same but adjustments will be necessary to accommodate the Mechazilla arm landing. Let's delve into what those differences might entail. Instead of landing in the Gulf of Mexico, the booster will need to return to Starbase, necessitating additional calculations and considerations. One major concern is fuel. Returning to Starbase will require more fuel for navigation and aligning the landing engine burn to facilitate accurate positioning within the Mechazilla arm. It's crucial to ensure that the booster doesn't run out of fuel during this process, as it could pose significant safety risks. Additionally, the navigation process will be more challenging due to the precision required for landing directly onto the Mechazilla arm. 
this aspect will demand careful attention to detail during flight force and mission. To address these complexities, SpaceX plans to use a virtual tower system to simulate the Mechazilla arm during the landing process. This rehearsal will allow the booster to practice landing steps with a primary focus on deceleration and navigation using the engine and grid fin to achieve a precise landing at the designated location. Indeed, ensuring the Mechazilla arm landing process minimizes any potential damage to the launch systems is crucial for long-term operation. While one flight might not showcase the full extent of potential damage, repeated landings could indeed pose significant risks. To mitigate this, SpaceX could adjust the landing angle to prevent direct impact on the launched systems. By landing at angles that avoid contact with critical infrastructure, such as the chopstick and OLM, potential damage can be minimized. This approach would require careful coordination to ensure the safe capture and placement of the booster. One possible solution is for the chopstick to expand at a position without the OLM beneath it on the booster approaches. Once stable, the chopstick could then rotate to position the booster onto the OLM, thus avoiding damage from the engine's energy flow. Implementing such measures would be essential for facilitating efficient post-flight activities, including repairs, refurbishments, and maintenance works. Ensuring the continued reliability of the launch systems for future missions. Indeed, the process of catching the booster is intricate and requires precise control to ensure a soft landing on the chopstick. Smooth speed control is essential to facilitate a gentle touchdown, which may involve a hovering process before the booster is fully captured by the chopstick. This operation adds complexity to the overall procedure. Furthermore, aligning the caught booster to a suitable position relative to the OLM is crucial for subsequent operations. While SpaceX may implement initial alignment measures, additional adjustments may be necessary to ensure proper positioning. This may involve the development of systems on the chopstick to provide slight mobility for the booster, enabling it to move to the required location as needed. These procedures highlight the meticulous planning and execution required for successful booster capture during upcoming flights. Any other important steps or considerations in this process would be vital to address for the safe and efficient operation of the Mechazilla arm system. To tackle these challenges, what upgrades or preparations must SpaceX undertake? In addition to internal preparations for Flight 4, SpaceX is eagerly awaiting updates from the FAA, underscoring the collaborative effort and meticulous attention to detail integral to every mission's success. Similar to previous flights, the FAA remains steadfast in its commitment to conducting a thorough review of the launch vehicle, launch system, and procedures to uphold safety standards. While overseeing SpaceX's mishap investigation into Flight 3, the FAA anticipates swift resolution due to the minimal environmental impact and notable progress made. Nonetheless, adherence to proper procedures and standards is paramount to preempt any complications with other regulatory bodies, particularly environmental agencies. Additionally, the evaluation of Flight Force novel procedures by the FAA is pivotal, given the introduction of new steps such as landing the booster on a virtual tower. Encouragingly, the FAA has conveyed positive sentiments. With Kelvin Coleman, the FAA's Associated Administrator, expressing confidence in the investigation's expedited progress. Furthermore, the FAA is streamlining its licensing process by transitioning to a portfolio-based approach, akin to the current Falcon 9 model. This bodes well for SpaceX, instilling greater confidence in expanding the Starship launch schedule in the future. As preparations for Flight 4 continue, SpaceX is already setting sights on subsequent missions. Development developments include the issuance of a road closure schedule for April 25, with a backup date on the 26th, facilitating the transfer of the booster to the Massey test site. With B-11 poised for launch B-12, having undergone two cryogenic tests and B-14 in the midst of stack completion, anticipation is riding high for the forthcoming rollout of B-13. This booster, earmarked for Flight 6 alongside S-31, stands poised to propel SpaceX into the next phase of its ambitious endeavors. Indeed, with events unfolding rapidly, 2024 may mark the culmination of Starship version 1's transformative journey. And that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in and that's all for today's update. If you enjoyed watching and found it useful, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the like button. And if you want to support our channel and if you want to be up to date, you can become an exclusive member. So click on our perks through the link in the description below. Thanks to watching and see you next time.